Welcome to our quick intro to the 1963 flick, 55 Days at Peking. This big historical movie takes us back to 19, during a time called the Boxer Rebellion in China. It's full of ups and downs, funny, shocking, and sad stuff, so stay tuned. What makes this movie special and still loved today? Well, it shows a really important part of history, and the actors are just great. Got a favorite memory about this movie? Share it with us below. So, if you're up for a trip through history with lots of drama, action, and moments you won't forget, hang on tight. Let's dive into 55 Days at Peking. It's going to be a ride. 55 Days at Peking is a historical epic film that premiered in 1963. Set in Peking, China, in 19 during the Boxer Rebellion, the movie revolves around the siege of the foreign legations compound in the city. The plot follows the efforts of various characters, including the British diplomat Sir Arthur Robertson, the American Marine Major Matt Lewis, and the Russian Baroness Natalie Ivanov to protect the compound and its inhabitants from the besieging boxers and the King Dynasty's forces. The main characters find themselves embroiled in a tense and dangerous situation as they struggle to maintain order and defend against the overwhelming forces surrounding them. Amidst the chaos of war and political intrigue, personal relationships develop, alliances are forged, and sacrifices are made in the fight for survival. 55 Days at Peking received critical acclaim for its epic scale, gripping narrative, and stellar performances, particularly from its lead actors Charlton Heston, Ava Gardner, and David Niven. The film was praised for its realistic portrayal of historical events and its attention to detail in recreating the atmosphere of turn-of-the-century China. At the time of its release, 55 Days at Peking was recognized with several prestigious awards and nominations, including Academy Award nominations for Best Art Direction and Best Film Editing. Its epic scope and compelling storytelling have cemented its status as a classic of historical cinema, captivating audiences with its gripping tale of courage, resilience, and sacrifice in the face of overwhelming odds. In the 1963 movie 55 Days at Peking, Gary Cooper served as a childhood role model for Charlton Heston. Heston, who starred alongside Cooper in The Wreck of the Merry Deer, admired Cooper's ability to perform his own stunts despite declining health. Heston, however, grew weary of his action-oriented image and aimed to be recognized for his dramatic acting skills. When John Wayne offered him the role of Jim Bowie in The Alamo, Heston declined due to the film's political implications. These decisions and experiences shaped Heston's career trajectory in the film industry. 55 Days at Peking is a significant film in history, captivating audiences with its grandeur and depth. The lead actor, known for playing Moses and the Ten Commandments, played a crucial role in the movie. Despite being seen as conservative, he spoke out against McCarthyism and the Vietnam War, criticizing President Nixon's policies. His resemblance to Michelangelo's statue helped him land the role of Moses. Another actor, originally cast in a different movie, saw his scenes cut from 55 days at Peking during editing. However, he continued to shine in other films. This shows how unpredictable the film industry can be with actors facing ups and downs in their careers. In the movie, the actors bring the historical events to life, immortalizing the struggle and sacrifice of those affected by war and revolution. Through their performances, audiences are transported back in time to witness the triumphs and tragedies of the past. As the credits roll and the lights dim, the movie's impact remains, showing the enduring power of storytelling on screen. Crafted with passion, it stands as a timeless masterpiece, leaving its mark on cinematic history for generations to come. Yvonne De Carlo, known for her role in 55 Days at Peking, was praised by her contemporary Yvonne De Carlo, who once said of her, She's one of the few women in Hollywood that I like. Later in life, facing personal struggles, she confided in her first husband, Mickey Rooney, about her battles with suicidal thoughts after suffering two strokes in 1986, which left her partially paralyzed. An Australian reporter encountering her remarked on her colorful language, describing her swearing as like a sailor and a truck driver were having a competition. Despite this, he found her captivating, even when she threw a glass of champagne at him, noting, the only thing I could think was how bloody gorgeous the woman was. Yvonne De Carlo's presence both on and off screen left an impression, garnering admiration from peers and journalists alike, showcasing a complexity that extended beyond her roles in 55 Days at Peking. Her experiences and characterizations echoed beyond the screen, shaping her legacy in Hollywood. 
The making of 55 days at Peking required 4,000 extras, including Chinese individuals brought from various establishments across Europe. Due to the shortage of Chinese individuals in Spain, extras were sourced from restaurants and laundries to fill roles in mass scenes. Charlton Heston, a key figure in the movie, expressed that Nicholas Ray, though credited as the director, did not fulfill the role effectively. Charlton Heston's involvement in The Three Musketeers and The Four Musketeers Milady's Revenge led to extensive research on Cardinal Richley. Despite the character's portrayal as an antagonist, Heston admired Richelieu's accomplishments for France. He was particularly struck by a quote attributed to Richelieu, I have no enemies, France has enemies. Heston insisted on incorporating a modified version of this line into the films, which was eventually fulfilled in the second movie, emphasizing his admiration for the historical figure. In the year that Cecil B. Demel directed and released the original epic The Ten Commandments, Charlton Heston was born. Later, he starred in the remake The Ten Commandments. In 1993, during the Waco standoff, he was hired by the FBI to provide the voice of God when talking to David Korsh, but the plan was never used. A memorial service for him was held at St. Martin in the Fields, London, on 27 October 1983. In 1963, 55 Days at Peking came out, a famous movie that grabbed attention beyond just being a film. It even affected Frank Sinatra's personal life. He got a statue of Ava Gardner from a movie called The Barefoot Contessa as a present. Even after they split, he kept the statue in his yard. But when he married Barbara Marks, she wanted it gone. Ava Gardner, known for her roles in movies like the Russian play called Autumn. This led her to act in Ladies in Retirement, her first Broadway play. It also introduced her to the kind of sinister roles she'd later play in movies. This started a new phase in her career. Ava Gardner's influence went beyond just movies. When Frank Sinatra died, Audrey Hepburn, another famous figure, went to his funeral. This shows how connected people were in the entertainment world back then. To sum up, the movie 55 Days at Peking from 1963 isn't just a movie. It's also a connection between the personal lives of big names like Frank Sinatra, Ava Gardner, and Audrey Hepburn, showing how everyone in showbiz was linked. In 1963, a movie called 55 Days at Peking made it to the American Film Institute's list of 100 most inspiring movies. Alongside classics like The Ten Commandments and Ben-Hur, it left its mark. One of its stars, Charlton Heston, lived in a mansion near Mulholland Drive in Los Angeles. Inside, he kept memorabilia from his acting career, including stuff from Ben-Hur and Planet of the Apes. Among the items were a painting of a Conestoga wagon and a pencil sketch of his friend Sir Lawrence Olivier as King Lear. The house also had 20 paintings of Heston in various roles like Ben-Hur and Moses. James Cameron once chose him for a role in True Lies because he thought Heston could convincingly intimidate Arnold Schwarzenegger. With its inspiring story and memorable cast, 55 Days at Peking remains a significant part of movie history.